first one is a essential variable they are a condition if they change gonna change the mechanical properties of the material and it needs to requalification I can I can write in a WPS right welding procedure specification I'm gonna charge on a work so I've been asked to write a WPS so I can I, if I'm having experience in the welding and welding inspection I can write the WPS or I can use a software you know I can put them what's the material is there's a bunch of the software out there and then or I can use ASME section 2 part C is a good reference for uh, you know with the lots of information you know supplementary information there that I can use them to write my WPS or I can use the welding handbook or any other things that I have I have a, you know experience in the welding and I have these resources available I put together a WPS but this WPS doesn't have a word until I make some tension tests and bend tests and, and prove this has the desired mechanical properties that comes with some cost laboratory cost okay so when you have a WPS and you qualify this you spend some money on that now if you need to change something on this WPS it needs requalification but if it is the essential variable yes you can't use the previous PQR or that's test coupon or mechanical testing you perform which is we name it procedure qualification record you can't use that PQR for this WPS to qualify this WPS but if it is you know non-essential then you can just you know change the WPS use the previous PQR the whole things about the essential variable and non-essential variable is this now we are in the essential variable if we change a variable is going to affect the mechanical property then then it's named essential variable and you need the requalification let me give you an example I have a one inch plate uh, for I'm going to use for either the you know uh, pressure vessel or storage tank or I'm going to use for there's a one inch pipe okay and then it doesn't require post weld heat treatment okay and then I use I put together a WPS and then I after the WPS is completed there's a no PWHT requirement on that and then uh, you know I send that to the laboratory that uh, make a test coupon and send the laboratory and I qualify my WPS done and I may uh, and I make my job you know it's, I, the, we go to the production and produce that welding work tomorrow this project is done and we get the, another project but for service requirement that piece of the pressure vessel or piping or storage tank whatever it is requires the PWHD not because of the wall thickness because of the service you know it might be amin or caustic so they say regardless the code requirement we need on this pressure vessel post weld heat treatment so your WPS is not qualified with the post weld heat treatment right but was without post weld heat treatment I can't use that previous uh, PQR for this new WPS I can write a new WPS actually it's the same condition everything is identical except the post weld heat treatment on the other one was NA it means not applicable or none and this one yeah we put the temperature and holding time hitting rate or stuff like that so I can use that because the heat treatment is an essential variable if I didn't do the heat treatment I can use the same PQR with this this is an essential variable okay so when the essential variable changes it affects the mechanical properties and I can't requalify my new WPS with the previous PQR this is named essential variable but now we are having a non-essential variables also like the one you can see in the screen if change the condition it's it's not going to affect the mechanical properties then I can uh, you know uh, revise my WPS I put together a new WPS and use the previous PQR like what like I have a WPS with the V groove and I have a PQR a test coupon with the V groove and I qualify my WPS I do my job and then tomorrow another project comes up and in that project I need to have a double V groove my welding engineer says okay this is need to be uh, you know double V groove so should I go and uh, put together another test coupon and then cut six pieces and send to the laboratory for qualification no V to the double V U to the W 
or uh, reverse is non-essential variables. So I don't need to requalify my WPS. What I need to do is write a new WPS or revise previous one and then this time show with the double V groove and put the previous PQR number on this because it's going to qualify this because it's a non-essential variable. So what is the supplementary essential variable? If you've been with me on section 8 or uh, B31.3 that you know sometimes our pressure vessel is not get exempted from the impact testing and we need to perform impact testing on pressure vessel plate. When the pressure vessel plate needs to be impact tested then the WPS that is going to be used on the pressure vessel needs also to be qualified by the impact testing. So it's not happens for any pressure vessel but happen to the sum of them and then we need also to qualify our WPS with the impact testing. Normally, you know, for, for you know, when I write the WPS, it doesn't require the impact testing. We do the two tension tests. We're going to review these things, two root bend tests, two face bend tests. But if need the impact testing, then we have to also to perform three specimen on the weld metal impact testing and three on the heat affected zone. And qualify our, uh, you know, WPS with the impact testing. So this supplementary essential variable only applicable if the construction code for certain item requires the impact testing. And then if it requires the impact testing, supplementary essential variable automatically is going to be essential variable. And if not, then they're going to be non-essential variable. We're going to consider them as a non-essential variable. So everything on the supplementary essential variable depends on particular item that we are going to weld. So this is about the supplementary essential variable. The next thing we want to, you know, uh, talk in here, we talked about the WPS is as a bunch of, you know, variables that we need to know. Some of them also comes with the wrench, you know. For example, wall thickness normally comes with the wrench and depending on the test coupon, we put the wrench. So if you go beyond the wrench, also it's going to be essential variable. You know, like a wall thickness has a wrench on WPS. If we, like, you have a WPS and it's cover up to maximum one inch, okay, on the WPS. And if you're having a new job with the one and a half inch, then you can't use these things, okay, it's going to be essential variable. You have to go back and put together a new WPS and put together a new test coupon and qualify your WPS. What I'm trying to say is not like a black and white. Sometimes it's a range. And if you go beyond the range, within the range is non-essential variable. But if you go beyond the range, it's going to be essential variable. We're going to have lots of example for this. Don't get confused. Let's be proceed and you're going to understand all of it.